Today is a day of holiday season, and we've got the one, the only, Marley Rivera on the show to chat about the Yankees. Let's do it. Let's talk Yanks. Talking Yanks with old drum boy, drum boy Jake. Recaps galore and weekly awards. Stat lines, steaming hot takes. Your Yankees news with these two fine dudes. It's time for Talking Yanks. Talking Yanks with old John Boy, John Boy and Jake. Talking Yanks with old John Boy, John Boy and Jake. Hello and welcome to Talking Yanks. We hope you had a fantastic Christmas or whatever you enjoy. We hope you enjoyed it. Now it's time to bring to you the conversation that we had with Marley Rivera from ESPN on our Winter Meetings live stream. Marley is the best. She was the first interview we did and just rocking, just hot. So there's a lot of Gary talk. There's some uh, lead em talk so, and just a lot of fun. I think a lot of people that hadn't heard Marley um, were very like, whoa, she was – she got voted as best interview by a lot of people on the comment section. So if you haven't heard it, you'll, you'll enjoy this. She's awesome, for lack of a better word. Um, just passionate and focused and so, so good. Um, it was funny, a little behind the scenes again, which I forget if we mentioned, but uh, on the live stream, Marley was supposed to be later in the day, but she couldn't do that, so we moved her up. To the one spot And it was awesome yeah. <laughs> It was awesome It was uh, we Moved DJ LeMayhew up to the one spot And uh, owned it She did the same thing She's awesome If you don't know Marley Get familiar And here it is Baseball Hello Alright we Marley. got we, I don't think guys? Hi Marley Hello. I'm not sure We gotta slide Hello. you over we'll have you Behind the scenes here Oh we're bringing her in. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Now you got the whole thing. All right. No, just keep it all Marley. Yeah, just, just, just Jake and Marley. Just That's keep, all we need. No, get all Marley. <laughs> oh, no, please. God, no. <laughs> our first, our first guest of oh, the God. day. What, what I love is the fact that I went from prime time <laughs> to blue paint special right now. <laughs> but these are my people. These are my people. Hey, I'm so glad to see le- them. Leading off is very important. Yeah. On base. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing. I hope you guys are safe, which is uh, what matters this, uh, this terrible, terrible time. But um, how about we don't talk about coronavirus and we talk about other stuff? Down Perfect. With that. Down with that. <laughs> I'm in for that. Everyone's got fatigue of that. Uh, so I, want, I wanted to ask any questions about last season because it was crazy. I want to ask about the the Dominican – what's it's called? Leadum? I don't know. League – well, it's just a short, so you know. It's just they call it Lidom because Li is for Liga, which is league, Liga, okay. and Dom for Dominican. So then, for short, that's why we say Lidom. But it's literally you can just say Dominican League. I or, can't uh, believe whatever. I never put that together. <laughs> oh, yeah, so I Li can't. is uh, L I. The word in Spanish is Liga. L I G A is the word for league. So, so that's where the Lidom comes from. We've been following it here because a lot of Yankees that we really care about are are down there and. And usually it's a huge party. It's a, yeah. not a party right now, but we're not talking about that. I, I, it's still I, been a party on the field on and the in the field clubhouse. and in the dugout. Yeah, oh, yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. I wanted to ask a, about the format of it because we're confused. Gary Sanchez well, plays three games, actually, doesn't play? I have to be fair here. I actually haven't checked what they've done lately because okay. they change it all the time. Yeah. So okay. you guys know. So, you know, if we're still staying in the old format, you know, it's like, so what do you need to know? Well, like, like I just mean the MLB players, like, do they get to choose when they play or not? Like, Andy okay. played three right. games and now he's not around well, anymore. I'm glad that Trevor is here because he can – hi, Trevor. <laughs> because hey. Trevor can certainly tell you, but it really depends on the player. And basically it is – and let me be very clear, it is how expensive you are. I, okay. I don't want to be uh, – I don't really want to, you know, sugarcoat it. It really is what it is. Some people think that it's about pitchers. Oh, the pitchers, they won't let them pitch because they will be off schedule. It really isn't. It is what – whoever – the team wants to protect from injury, 
those are the people that you do not let play in the Dominican because they believe that then you're just putting more miles on your body. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of players, especially pitchers and Dominican pitchers, are really used to doing that, to putting more miles on that body. So, for example, to give you a Yankee example, Dylan Betances used to talk all the time about how great it was for him to be down. Actually, former Yankee example, yeah. I apologize. Yeah. Um, uh, that, that he would say, it really helped me out. And as you could see, you know, throughout every time that Dylan went the offseason to the Dominican, he was actually better. Right. So it really is a personal choice by the player, but they have to ask permission from the team. If you're a player who is under league minimum and not a top prospect, I can pretty much guarantee you that your, you know, your agent can just talk to the team and it'll be all right at this moment. And I'll use a perfect example because we're going to be having it coming out on ESPN next week. I had a chance to chat with one of your favorites, kids with uh, Gary Sanchez for a long time uh, this right. week. <laughs> and um, and Gary was working out with the team whether he would be allowed to play or not. So this is kind of, you know, and Gary Sanchez, you know, believe it or not, Yankee fans, it, he is a price possession that the yes. New York Yankees have. <laughs> Tell him. So it is a very big decision that the Yankees have to make, and it really is an individual per player decision, but it has to be quote unquote authorized by the team. A lot of players that are, you know, if you're a free agent or whatever, you can do whatever you want. And uh, I'm sure Trevor will correct me if I'm, uh, <laughs> if I said anything. You know, you know, what's really cool about, you know, uh, the winter leagues is, you yeah. know, people think these guys can go down and yeah. And they can say when they play, that's not, that's not the truth. If you don't perform yeah. in the winter leagues, they will send you home. Yes. And you can think you're a, a, a big, you know, bad boy in, in MLB and you have some show time, but you go down there and you are over for, Oh, for a series, oh, for 12, they'll sit you and then send you home. Exactly. So and you know, and, and, and something that I think that I'm sorry to interrupt you guys, something that is also important to point out is how much so many players, including non-Dominican players, let's call it the gringos out there who <laughs> love going down oh to the DR and to Puerto oh. Rico. Because it's different. You know, one of the things that you guys, I'm so happy that you're all here because you're the future of baseball, right? Like the old folks like me, you know, we're, we're kind of on the way out, but I'm very lucky. I grew up in Puerto Rico. So I grew up with baseball that was fun and that was passionate. And that's what I like. In the last couple of years, we started to see it, right? With this incredible crop oh, yeah. of uh, super young, talented players of the Ronald Acuna's and the Vladis and the Javi Baez's of the world, right? There's a lot of them. So uh, Correa, don't get mad at me. Lindor, don't get mad at me. Like all these guys, <laughs> that brought this energy and this passion that had always been there. It's mm -hmm. always there. It's just that they had to pretend to play, you know, by the rules and by the American way. Let me, let me be very clear though. I can be a baseball purist. So I'm not saying that everything goes and, you know, but mm -hmm. baseball is fun. It's a game. Let's have a good time. And that's what people do in the Dominican. That's why people, you know, whose last name is not only Rivera, but also the ones with the last name Ploof would be really interested to play down in the DR because it's fun and you have this kind of childhood passion that made all these men who love playing baseball for a living and all these ladies too, you know, who play baseball for a living in softball, why do they love it? Because of that. And then the DR is a little bit of a reminder. So there's a lot of that that uh, guys want to go down there to kind of exploit that passion that they used to have for the game. I mean, baseball's fun. It's a game. Clip that now. Baseball's uh, fun. And, and we, we care much more about the Riveras than the Ploofs, especially today. Oh! Uh, but I, I, I want to go, <laughs> hey, if you're going to dangle the Gary, t I, yes. I, 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 we always need more. Um, and kind of what your stance is on him, because, I mean, you know, I'm sure you've seen enough of it on Twitter. Uh, a yeah. lot of love, a lot of hate all over the board. And the other – Two guys that are probably non-free agents that are getting talked about the most this year. I think Gary's up there uh, for yeah. reasons that are kind of known. The injuries, the slumps, the highs, the lows, everything. And then Vladito. He, uh, you know, yeah. like me, I'm trying to tone it down a little bit. And he's, uh, he's, he's, he's testing out the new body. So I, I don't know if you've got any, any Vlad, uh, Vlad updates for us and anything well, else right, you have on let's, Gary. Let's stay with Gary. And we're talking with Molly Rivera from <sighs> yeah. ESPN. If anyone that doesn't I know, can't, uh, I can't give you too many details of the interview, but I will give you what I can give you. Okay. Right, he, right now, and I'll be in, happy to. Is he in good spirits? So give you my point of view, <laughs> my point of view, right, of this whole yeah. situation. The reality is, I get it. Yeah. I get why fans are angry. Why wouldn't you be angry if your catcher is leading in pass balls? Yeah. Why wouldn't you be angry? So I'm okay with that. The problem that I have with this is the way the criticism happens. 
And when you automatically, and I'm going to go there, when you automatically go, the player is lazy, there are a lot of connotations that happen with brown and black men related to that adjective or to that adverb, depending on how you're using it, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that that's the problem that I have with it. I don't have a problem with you expecting great performance from your catcher, from any player that you have. You're a fan. You're, you're supposed to expect the very best of your players. But the criticism towards Gary that I have seen that has been really, really unfair has been the guy's lazy. He's not even trying. And there isn't at any point where there could be another option, which is, hmm, maybe the Yankees have changed coaches a lot. Maybe the kid doesn't really get, you know, all these changes. Maybe they're giving him way too information, too much information for him to process. And he's not that kind of guy. I don't know. And, and trust me, these are not things that I discuss with Gary. This is just, you know, me in general. So that's the problem that I have. If we stick to the numbers and we say he's terrible in pitch framing and he can't get a low strike and he can't get this, but then he improved in pass balls. He does really well in 19 and it still doesn't matter. Coronavirus season comes this terrible, awful season where he could not have been worse at the plate. I mean, it was embarrassing to watch. Let's be clear yep. and embarrassing for Gary Sanchez. I've known Gary Sanchez since he was 17 years old. No one was more embarrassed by that performance than Gary Sanchez. So let's, let's be very clear. And the attacks and the, the accusations that he doesn't care, that's the part that bothers me. You want to call for your player to be traded? No problem. You think he sucks and you'd rather have JT Romuto? I get it. I understand that that's what you would like as a fan. Don't stand there and say that your catcher is not trying and that he's lazy and he's not putting in the work. That's I, it. I, so, I, I, that's agree. I agree with everything you said, and I do think the connotation's there, and I want to add to it. It's also <laughs> a lazy yeah. – um, it's 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 a lazy opinion to have. It's a to lazy just, take. It's a lazy take. You're lazy. To, like the Give dude, the take. dude was got like what four million at sixteen because he was the best fucking sixteen year old at Oops. baseball. You think that's lazy? That's not lazy. Like you don't get laziness. I love to when get you there. always reference the different pitchers that he had to work oh with. Oh my how many god! Different languages and, and like and, so many different languages yeah. and different and relievers. Let's, and let's be clear. I'm not an apologist because I I actually really dislike when journalists become apologists for players. So so that's not what I'm doing. I'm just stating facts, right? It, it really is. Someone just asked me recently. I've known Yadi Molina for most of his life. We're both Puerto Rican. We really have a very close relationship. And someone was asking me whether the Cardinals should sign Yadi. And then in the same sentence, they asked me whether he's a Hall of Famer and the best catcher in baseball. And the answers are no and yes. I don't think <laughs> they should because he does not give them the best chance to win. In my opinion, I think that that Yari at this moment in his career is a good backup and a great leader. I don't know that he is a day to day catcher. I hope he proves me wrong, because one thing that that Yari Molina loves to do is prove all of us wrong. And I'm sure he will. At 38, he'll get some big time contract and and win to World Series and and tell me to shut the F up. So I'm sure that will happen. I have an idea for you <laughs> uh, around Yari. I've been floating this through all my my Cubs and Cardinals people that I know. Okay. I think Yachty and Wayno should sign oh. a one-year deal, package price with the Cubs, and they're just the you know, backup catcher. And then you know, once every week wow. they play the Cardinals, and those two go out there and just say, "You didn't want us back." <laughs> ha ha. Well, the problem that you have is the Cubs have way too many catchers. Yeah. So they already have the issue of having Contreras and a great catcher in Caratini, right? That they haven't been able to develop yeah. and trying to move him to first. And what the heck do we do? So uh, you're just bringing more problems up on the Cubs, and I'm sure they would love that. I mean, no one knows uh, the you know the opponent pitching like uh, like Yadi Molina does. But but going back to the point, I'm okay with criticizing the numbers. Yeah. Go for it. I'm okay with that. Tell me what he's doing, but then also tell me what he's doing right. Because the improvements were never spoken about. It was always, oh, Gary sucks. Gary's so lazy. Gary has this many pass balls. Last year, he was awesome. Yeah, in 2019, he didn't have any pass balls. Uh, I've heard but, anything about that at all on but, Twitter. No. Oh, wait, maybe Gary, you know, improved a little. And then maybe they completely... Coronavirus season. And then they, I, I, they bring in a new catcher and completely change his stance. Catching coach. A catching coach yes. to, to fix the, the pitch framing. But, like, the dude just figured it out. Like, 2019, we weren't scared about pass balls that's anymore. The, and then they That's the thing. Is that what they did to him 
makes him have more pass balls. When you get down low like that and you're getting down on one leg and you're trying to come up, going down from up, it's imp- you. I want anybody that says he's lazy, go get in that position <laughs> and then get in the position to block a ball and see how fast you can do it. And you have a guy throwing 95 miles an hour at you. Go 95. Uh, Zach Britton. Zach Britton's and, and 95 this is the sinker, thing. This is the thing. There's very few lazy baseball. There are some lazy baseball players in the there building. Are. But they're the minority. Like, that's maybe yeah. – and most of, of Trevor, people. would you agree that if we have any lazy baseball players, they're sort of the ones who were not lazy, and then they sure. kind of made all the money, sure. and they're kind of <laughs> that. Be all the I don't think you ever make it to the majors ever. You're not part of that two to three percent that comes from the minors to the majors if you're lazy. It will never happen. Especially, especially a catcher. Catchers have the most taxing job of any position in baseball. Go watch them in spring training and see all the stuff that they have to do. It's ridiculous. So you're not lazy if you're a catcher, okay? And some people handle failure or success differently. Gary doesn't have to be super emotional. It doesn't mean he's lazy. It just means that's how he processes things. If a guy does that and he's doing well, they're like, ooh, he's cool, calm, and collected. I love that. And then he's doing bad. They're like, oh, he's he doesn't care. He's lazy. It's the same person. Yes. And well, listen, I, hate, I hate listen, all the Gary. We always try to legislate how you're supposed to act on the field. We saw this, right? And in, 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 we, we used to see this with Robinson Cano. You guys remember yeah. he had he had he was so lazy because he made things look easy. Mm-hmm. Like it just really, I've just never understood that. Uh, like not, I not understand throw... not hustling to first. I understand that crap that people get you know worked up about. I don't get that worked up about that. But if you want to, go ahead. You know you don't hustle at first and you get angry. I get it. That's the spirit of the game. But like lazy, really. I, and this <laughs> is very Yankee bias. Very Yankee bias. I used to say this when I was a teenager, but. I would always say, like, Cano makes a spectacular play, and he makes it look easy, and they call him lazy. In Boston, Dustin Pedroia used every ounce of effort, an inch of his body, to make that play. And it was like he had to, like, dive and hustle and throw, and they were like, look at that, man. He's trying so hard. I'm like... It was easy Just for one. Like, you've it, been it, texting with Mariano, haven't you? It was you? easy with uh, one. It was hard for the other. <laughs> like, come on now. But I love Dustin Pedroia as a short guy as well, so I'm not trying to knock him. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> God, I love short guys. Short kings. Are there, uh, it's are there... just, we can't compare the style, right? And then yeah. automatically accuse someone for being lazy or not. So, yes, it is a little bit of a, of a Yankee. And, and, and please, and one thing that I will tell you from my conversation with Gary, I asked him a lot about Twitter, about the criticism, and the whole time all he said was, what is it that they want me to do except work my ass off, which is what I'm doing? Yeah. And I really, it, he had no answer except yeah. I'm working my ass off. Like it just, it, I really am working my very best and I'm trying to do this and I'm trying to do that. I really am. And he's like, I didn't do that. You know, I, it's obvious what he did this season, especially in the strikeout numbers, right? They were kind of ridiculous. He's like, I sucked at the plate. You know, yeah. this isn't really that, something that I did, but how can people say, that I'm, you know, lazy. And when I told him the lazy thing, by the way, he didn't even know that that's a narrative. Ooh. Because Gary, <laughs> which is kind of nice. Yeah. Gary, honestly, <laughs> is not on social media. It's not on Twitter. He's one of those, like, a, he's like a really old school, like, young guy. Like, he's like a really, really old young guy. Like, he never does. Like, Severino and Glaber and, and Gio. Like, these guys have this young spirit and this energy. And they're always, like, going places and hanging out with their, you know, wives and so on and doing fun stuff and i love seeing all the stuff that these young men do right like it's really fun to watch what does gary do gary does nothing gary goes work out he's goes tired from catching. <laughs> yeah he's tired from working his ass up yeah. i will say that if gary's watching this i had your back this entire season these guys okay. can vouch for me i'm always like what are you guys gary sanchez is one of the best catchers in baseball he threw me out from his knees yeah, yeah. Well, we always have so a lot of DVD catchers. Yeah. Yeah. I was, led the league, the Gary in, train this led the league in double plays and stuff, Trev. So, yeah, not the Gary's not bragging about throwing you. You were easy knees. meat on the bases, if we're being I honest. I was. <laughs> I thought I had the base stolen off of CC. Turns out I didn't. But anyways, <laughs> again, Gary, I had you. I had your back this entire year. I have one more Gary question. I've had the nickname Teddy Bear Ga- Teddy Bear Gare for him for a while because he just reminds oh. me of like a teddy bear. Is that apt? Since you've kn- you know him, does that fit his personality? He's very shy. So I yeah. think that one of the parts of being a teddy bear is that you sort of, em- right? Isn't it like an yeah. embracing? Yeah, yeah. Like, 
teddy bear. Like we want to hold you. Yes. Okay. Hold you. Great. Hi. You um, know, and squeeze you a little. Well, like I feel like Harry's really shy. So I don't know. I feel like you need to adjust. Maybe add an adjective uh, to the name, like something additional, because he's very shy. He's very, very laid back. Very shy. All right. All right. I, I like think that. he gives good hugs. If I'm looking at his body, yeah. big oh, guy, you know, squishy. Like, yeah, he's squishy. It's a su- squid. It's a surprisingly <laughs> big hug. He's is it? Gary's low key massive. That's the other thing people miss, isn't he? Like six three, like two forty or something like that. Like, like six two. Yeah, exactly. He's yeah. one of those guys that is just really a big catcher. Uh, one of the interesting conversations. There was a feature a couple of years ago on Newsday where uh, one of the Yankees beat writers talked to Sandy Alomar about Gary and there were a lot of like, they talked a lot about that, about size and how difficult it is, you know, sort of, I mean, Gary is not as big as Sandy Alomar, right? Like Sandy yeah. Alomar is like six, five, Sandy Alomar Jr. And stuff, but they talked about that a bit about being the bigger catcher, which is always, you know, as we know, an issue. Yeah. All right. We have one question we're asking every single guest. It's our Roosevelt's oh. question of the day. We need you to make your prediction. Where will Trevor Bauer sign? I would tell you ours. I said Angels, Trev said Padres, Jake said Mets. I think I'm going to stick with the Mets. And I have, and it's not because I have inside information. It's because I believe Trevor Bauer is ready for prime time. And he will take less money to go somewhere where people will listen to him in a really, really big media platform. Bright lights. I like that. <laughs> big city, man. Oh, Keep yeah, it, we'll, it. We'll stay away from the Yankees. Is there any uh, player, young player, Latino player that you're excited about that maybe someone that doesn't follow the whole league? Who's next? Maybe? Yeah, who's yeah, who's I next? Think, you know, I think we're waiting for a certain someone who plays in the AL East. You know, the Tampa Bay Rays, and and the Rays are going to continue to give you a really, really hard time. You know, in the AL East, they are the best team in the AL East uh, now that Alex Cora is back with the Red Sox. That's going to be interesting. Uh, to see what he's going to do for those guys. And I think that everyone wants to see Wander Franco, and so do I. So uh, that's going to be fun to watch. I want to ask you one more Yankees thing. Wow. Oh. It's the young guy. So it's everything. I want to hear about the Martian a little bit because I own some of his baseball cards, which are <laughs> super hot in the streets. So you basically have stock in his career. This is, yeah, this I has become a financial. Those cards up and Tell me about this kid. <laughs> everything I hear, he's just a, he's an alien. They call him the Martian. I'm getting worried about him, Marley. Why? Okay, so tell me why. <laughs> because he's getting too big. He's like 5'8". He's 5'8", and he's like me and Jake in the same bodysuit of like <laughs> of like muscle and width. Like, I've never seen that size play outfield. I haven't uh, followed a lot of it because, as you guys know, we've been a little preoccupied yeah. with some things over yeah. here. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with, um, with what happens with every really big guy that they talk about the Yankees, right? And anyone that's coming up or any player, right, that it's like so excited, like it happened with Luis Robert, right? Like it's yeah. – Luis Robert didn't even this season really do what we thought he was going to do. Let's be clear, right? It was coronavirus season, so it's an entirely – really unfair assessment of a player that I think is going to be so exciting and so awesome to watch. Yeah. And I can't wait, but l- let's wait. I just don't understand this, this okay. hyping up of players before they've even accomplished anything at all. So I hope it happens. It's wonderful. Come on, the Martian. That's freaking awesome. But I let's right. Yeah. I'm with heart, you. I feel the exact same way as we, you. We have you people know? call in all the time and ask our opinion on him. And I, and I say, let's wait till he's 18. <laughs> like, no. Give like, me to like age 18. I'm- but but one thing that I'll say, guys, what's very cool about shows like yours and, you know, and, and a lot of the things that you guys do is that you are responsible for people caring about those guys. You know, a lot of you guys, you know, my boys at Cesp- Cespedes Barbecue is the same thing. Like these guys, you guys are responsible for making an entire generation of young fans care about the 16 and 17 year old no one watched gary sanchez when gary sanchez was coming up you know how yeah. many times i was by myself with no other reporter and this was supposed to be the top position player for the new york yankees now you guys have made it like a thing it's very cool so in the end i may be contradicting myself and then just <laughs> going back completely and saying more power to you come on let's hype them all up because baseball needs young fans and we really need to learn about the game you know all throughout and also to learn how difficult it is to get there because it it gets lost. Like I remember, and I know how difficult you Yankee fans can be. I remember the chance and the hate towards Jacoby Ellsbury. It was when I was, you know, at the beginning of the beat at the Yankees. And, and I remember kind of telling fans, 
Tell me the greatest athlete you've ever seen in college that you thought he was going to be a superstar in sports X. And they would mention whoever, right? Like, you know, player X, it was amazing. Tim Tebow, right? Like, he was amazing. It was awesome to watch. And I said, that was Jacoby Ellsbury. Yeah. And look at this guy now, right? This guy that you think he sucks. It's a really, really, really hard place to make it. So it's very cool then maybe that the young kids are getting hyped up and that you guys are talking about it. It's, that's it. I'm, I'm turning completely around. Let's talk more about it. <laughs> I love it. Well, we always talk about that, like, you know, Jay Happ got a lot of crap, and he's kind of, of this, uh, uh, he's an older, like, calm presence now. He's not your prototypical, like, that guy's the best athlete on the field because in case yeah, a pitcher. But we always say on the show, like, in Hap, Jay Hap's hometown, if you went he's to the Jay best Hap's athletes that's ever existed from that town. <laughs> so if you just change the scope a little bit on these guys, you really widen it outside of, like, People only think of the top 100 players yes. and they compare That's everyone. That's what you say you get to watch, yes. right? The one yeah. that you get to when watch on wide, TV. Like these are top. So I, I appreciate that. And, <laughs> and get Gary and Sano on the twins, your boy, Trev, they oh. were the one, two out of the DR international 16 year old signings. And every team, the Yankees and the twins were fighting over them. And like you said, Marley, if this happened now, that'd be a story. Yeah. That'd be Twitter. People yeah. would be following it. And the Yankees ultimately got Gary, and they chose to spend more money on Gary than Sano. But, like, at 16, those were the two gods of international free agent uh, signing. So it, it wasn't a thing. I just remember the Yankees never signing a long-term catcher because they are like, we got Gary Sanchez soon. <laughs> then he came up in 16, and I was like, congrats. He's perfect. But you know what, John Boy, think about this. Like, imagine being, and I know now I'm going to start sending, like, the Gary Sanchez apologies, but I guess I don't care. Um, Imagine that you are this kid, right? And everyone has hyped you up and you got all that money and you are, Gary comes from the poorest of the poor in the Dominican, right? And this is this kid who made it, who has all this talent, who everyone thought this is going to be it. And in the middle of it, a little bit later, they go and sign Brian McCann. Now, I understand that that's what the Yankees needed to do. They needed that veteran presence. Brian McCann, one of the great veteran catchers in baseball, was available, right? And the mm -hmm. opportunity came along, and you do it. You pull the trigger. But just imagine the stud, the Kraken that has been waiting to show himself and then just made him a backup, right? And then this is exactly what has happened to Gary. So now I'm not saying that he doesn't need to own up. And if you want to be the freaking catcher for the New York Yankees, then you better man up and get those pass balls down, period. That's just what you have to do. But we also have to see you know, what the process of this young, young child that ended up being in this position at the Yankees, and we've seen him grow and make all these mistakes, right, all the time, but it's happening in front of our eyes because he is that good that he gets to be that young and the starting catcher for the Yankees. Quick reminder, <laughs> second fastest catcher, second fastest player ever to 100 home runs in the history of Major League Baseball. Yeah. Just a quick reminder. It's an elite there. list. The 100 home run list is an elite List only the best, oh, the best get on the list. Trev, you take away position player home runs. Are you still on yeah, that list, Trev? 104 outside <laughs> I am. position players. Okay, all right. <laughs> That's huge. A lot of them against those Yankees, too. You know what? You know what, Trevor? This is the moment when you go between the three of you, how many you got. So, you yeah. know what? Come uh, on. It depends on you count yeah. wiffle ball, home run derby <laughs> no, on the little the league field. I was, Jimmy talked about, you know, in high school, I was the man. And then you get to pro ball and you understand just how good everybody is and how hard it is to make it. Even as a first rounder, I went through every single level to get there. And then, you know, I wasn't that – I was an average player in the big leagues. But, like, in my mind, I was one of the best players in the world, and you can never take that away from me. So right. anybody that talks crap about Gary or anybody that's been in the big leagues and calls him lazy, it's bullshit. It's so hard to make it. It's so freaking hard to make it, dude. It really this is. isn't basketball or football where you go from college – I mean, those are very hard to make it to. I'm not taking anything yeah. away from them. But you have to grind the minor leagues too, and that'll that'll weed people out. Yeah. So I want to. We got a couple more minutes. I want to talk here. about. I want to talk about Vladdy, another one of your, yes. uh, your, your. Boys oh my! Oh my children! Just yes, say yes, it. Children. Me. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's okay. Vladdy came in All right. uh, after Corona. He was heavier than they wanted him to be, or thought he was be. They moved cool. him. The, they moved him the first base. The reports now say he lost 40 pounds. He looks great. It seemed we were like, dude, you're so young and so much promise. Like you need to shed this. There was just to, there to was a, going. there was a moment this season when you're like 21 years old in that body. I just it, it it's not the path. 
Have you spoken with him this off season uh, about uh, and like any insight onto losing weight? Does he want to try and retake third base? Is he first base now, or or what's kind of a Vladdy update for us? Had a, I've had a couple of conversations with him, with his agent, and some of his family members. And Vladdy is the player. The first one was we had a joke in the Yankees beat when I was on. I guess I'm back on it now. But uh, that when Luis Severino came up, he was the first player who could officially be my child without okay. horrible life decisions. Yeah. But um, <laughs> with uh, <laughs> I'm going to go back. Focus, Marley. Focus. This is what happens. You see, wait, because I'm yeah. home. I'm like, oh, I can just have this conversation. <laughs> but anyway, coming back now, Vladdy comes up to me once and goes, Marley, let me show you this picture that my dad sent me. And it is me playing like cats with Vladdy Jr. at eight years old. So it made me wow. really, really wow. upset. But anyway, so yes, I have. Vladdy is loving the new body. And now okay. I want to say something that is going to be kind of cool because – a lot of people thought Vladdy had a problem. Vladdy didn't think he had a problem. He never did. He always thought that he looked fantastic, that he was in excellent shape, and then he was the player that he was meant to be at that moment. We should all have for one second that kind of self-esteem to yeah. sit there and go, I am freaking awesome. Look at me. I mean, that's how Vladdy lived his life every single day. I'm not kidding. You, like need, it's well, a, you need that to be a pro athlete. This, yeah. path, this is this. And he's like, what are you talking about? Wait, me? He, he's like, he thought he was amazing. So now that he's gotten back in a routine because he needed to do that, it was limiting his uh, his incredibly gifted skills, but he, he was being limited. And now that he sees what he can do and how things are shaping up, and like you said, it, this is a kid who's 22. Right. Like this is what's going to happen. This is going to be his 22 season coming up in 2021. And he realizes that with better fitness, he doesn't have to be a stick. You know, as we know, Albert Pujols was never particularly a stick. Right. Neither has been some players that have been very fit their their entire lives haven't been really particularly skinny. And this is something that he's realized the potential of what he's doing with his body. And he's really, really excited. And so I don't know if he's going to keep it up, right? Like, I don't know, but he's really loving what it can do. And he did not talk about any changes of position. Basically, okay. uh, Charlie Montoya has told him, you know, for now, you're the first baseman. We'll see what happens. And, and it's okay. insane when you get into the numbers, because, I mean, you know, we two years ago, the Vladdy hype was insane. He was hitting, you know, 400 in the minor leagues, blah, blah, blah. He comes up, and he was still really good. He had a 106 OPS plus. This year, he improved. He was a 115 OPS plus. He played in all 60 games, which, as Yankee fans, almost blows our mind that guys get to play every day. So, I I mean, I think this next season, I think it's already Vladdy season. I, I'm oh. I'm expecting he's going he's gonna to almost really? bounce back. You don't think it's Luis Roberts season? I think it's Luis Roberts. Well, I think Ooh. it was Luis Roberts. Robert. Robert season this <laughs> Panther, year, La and then he, he kind of that that second yeah, half. Oh, I like it. Trevor La Pantera, I love it. It's great. I mean, come on. Trevor's at- a great nickname. Trevor. Anyway, no, I, I'm with you. I'm with you, Jake. I Tre- think so. Because uh, Luis Great. Robert, uh, but that's what I'm kind of saying. Like, Luis Robert passed him. Like, Luis Robert was the story of the season. Like, I think these baby Jays, and uh, I think Vlad is going to come back where we're talking about him a lot. Because, again, the conversation went to Vlad's weight, not his baseball yes. player, which he's, the stuff he's still doing at ages 20 and 21 is incredible. I Incredible. like that he looked in the mirror and just saw felt. That story, awesome. Ellie Strin. <laughs> That's awesome. like when they have we like. Want to be. And that group of juniors, right? I had the, the I, I will call it the honor because it was a great thing. I got a couple of years ago, I got to spend time with all of them in the minors, uh, with all these kids that are juniors. And I got to be with, you know, I mean, basically all the ones that are in the majors now. And one of the cool ones, everyone talking about how Bo Bichette, was going to be the great player to come out of that bunch, how Vladdy was going to be the great hitter, but Bo Bichette being the, the great player. And now seeing Kevin, right? And now yeah. seeing all these kids coming up. And now Key Brian Hayes. Like, yeah, these yeah. kids that, that I got to see in the minors and the, we, 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 we you guys got to see their dad play on TV. I got to cover them. So it's really kind of embarrassing how old we're getting. <laughs> who, who, who's on the – if we were to make a great team of um, MLB Suns right now, I mean, you got – Bell, you got Bellinger, you got Vladdy, you got Bichette, you got Biggio, you got D. Gordon, um, Lance McCullers Jr. McCullers Jr. You could go. You could. We, we could make, make a, team, make a squad. We need to make a graphic out of that. Somebody, I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> What's his name? Uh, <laughs> Drew Butera. Drew Butera could be the catcher. Drew Butera. Yeah. Wow. There's a Sal lot. Like Boone's the manager because his dad was a manager. Yeah. Boone family. 
You know what happens a lot. We're talking about Vladdy, and and, and I'll do this real quick. Guys will get to the big leagues on talent alone, hmm. and then you get to the big leagues, and you're like, wow, this now I'm here, and Stay, it's really hard. Right. Staying's harder than getting there sometimes, right, Trev? Yeah. So you realize, okay, what it? Where am I lacking? What? Where can I improve? Because I need to be better. And yeah. then a lot, a lot of times it's, I need to get, my diet needs to be better. I need to work out so I can stay strong for 160, 162 games. So I think that's kind of probably what happened to Vlad. He got by on talent alone. And now he realizes that's probably not going to work for the long haul. And here I'm going to, I'm going to get better. And this is one area I can improve here. And, and, and he'll learn that. And there'll be more things and more things. His sleep schedule like I said, his diet, all this stuff will come, and you have to do that if you want to stay. And trust me, once you have one of those jobs, you want to hold on to it as tight as you can because there are young guys every freaking year that want to steal your job, and that's not a fun feeling. You have to keep going. I tell people this all the time. Young kids that play the game, keep going. You can't stop once you get to the big leagues. You know what, Trevor? You made such a good point. There's an expression in Spanish which is which a lot of the players will say, which is, no es llegar, es quedarse which means it's not about arriving, it's about staying there. Yeah. And the hardest thing in baseball, if it's hard to arrive, it is way harder to stay. And I'm probably the only Puerto Rican girl who's gonna make this analogy, but I'm a massive golf fan. And one of the great, uh, one of the great things that I ever learned in golf is that these top athletes, right? And I, saw, I had just seen Dustin Johnson win by like 19 strokes. And the next morning he was on the putting green. The next morning, he was working on the one putt he had missed. And mm -hmm. that's what these guys have to do every day. They have to ultimately do the, the hard work actually starts when you get to the majors. Because like Trevor was saying, there's a lot of guys, there's a lot of juniors and like a lot of non-juniors back there waiting to take your job over. And it really mm -hmm. is amazing how you see these guys just work so hard. And the ones that don't, it doesn't mean, you know, some of them do stay. But it doesn't mean that the ones that put all, all that work in, that will stay. So just imagine, you know, how I really have the greatest admiration for anyone who's played a day in the majors. I, I, I really, really do. Trevor's idol and hero and, and greatest uh, friend, Derek Jeter, used to say, until I bat a thousand <laughs> and make zero errors, I got to practice. <laughs> Trev? No, no, I, I love Jeter. It was not Jeter's favorite, so... <laughs> <laughs> Trev. I want to talk about Mont Charlie Montoya. Yeah, I didn't hear that. What happened? She said that you no, and no, Jeter Trevor, are dear friends. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for our Blue Jays fans, Montoya, I read uh, John Feinstein's book um, where no one knows your name about minor league players, and Montoya was the Durham Bulls manager down there. And it talks about a lot about his life. And, and you know, he had a child that had to get a lot of surgeries and, like, kind of eye-opening, life-is-fragile stuff for Montoya, who – is it Montoyo or Montoya? I don't want to get it wrong. No, Montoya, you get it correct. Montoyo. I'm very um, proud of you. Thank you. And uh, he and he said, like, he doesn't have that vim and anger in him. He's very relaxed, very casual guy in the book because of this, because of his life experiences. And with all these young kids, does he have a, uh, do, does he have a good sense of that locker room? Like, he's always got the bongo drums. He's always playing. Yeah. It, it, does that translate well for these youth? It seems like it would. I, mean, I have to say, I have to go on the record first and say that Charlie Montoyo is a dear and close friend of mine. Okay. So you will not see me here say a negative word about this man. Hey, right, hype <laughs> so, him up. Tell a story. But, now, I, and, and, but with reason, right? And, and one of the things that we say about Charlie Montoyo, anyone who's ever met him, is that he's too good for the game. And that means that he is just so honest and open and kind that Charlie Montoyo thinks every day is a gift because he gets to manage in the majors. He can't believe every day when he wakes up that he is the major league manager. He actually treats every day like a gift because like you mentioned, he had a child, his name is Alex, who had a bunch of heart surgeries and was really on the brain, right? And Charlie Montoya decided to spend the entire season, not only you know from hotel to hotel like every player did, but without seeing his family. So he would not expose, right, his wife and children. His child is okay, but, you you know, you always worry. And he's still very young. He's 13. So and he's close that's to him, who, too. That's, yeah. oh, man. And that's who Charlie Montoyo is. So he is probably, I don't know that you can separate the man from the manager when it comes to Charlie. It's kind of, like, very difficult for me to do that. Technically, he has the experience in the minors. He's going to, you know, F up. He's going to do, you know, it's not like the guy doesn't know what he's doing. But that heart, he is the guy. Someone asked me about Charlie the other day. 
And they said, Marley, what do you think about Charlie getting that job? And I said, he's the guy who doesn't get the job. So you feel really happy that he did. Well, he, and well, I'm he, really, he had the really record. surprised that the Blue Jays hired him. He had the really record honestly. for like most most seasons as a minor league manager with ever being a major. Like I think he was number one or two on that yeah. record. So yes. yeah, that's pretty cool. His story and he's is really a, cool. He's a minor league Hall of Famer. Like, like, Bull, he was with the Durham Bulls for a long time. I know, it really is. So he's a very special man, and I think it's a very good group for him. But we will see. The Blue Jays still have no pitching, so <laughs> that is going to be an issue. I'm so glad that they brought in Hinjun Roo. That is going to be great, you know, for the franchise. And he proved who he could be, you know, with basically, you know, being one of the Cy Young candidates this year. So he really was outstanding. But they still need more pitching. So if they want to compete with the big boys, and we know there's uh, at least two in the in the AL East, uh, they're going to need a lot more than, uh, than just Ryu. And some young kids. I've got Odorizzi going to the Blue Jays, and Jake has oh, like Pack. That. Jake has Paxton going to the Blue Jays. Little, little Big Maple big, back in Canada. I think Big Maple goes back. I can see oh, that. Yeah. I don't know that James enjoyed his season uh, in America during coronavirus <laughs> season. <laughs> well, I think uh, Big Maple will, would go back. I like that one. I actually think that'll be good for the Blue Jays. Feel okay. free to steal it, no problem. And I, I don't <laughs> like uh, all the nice stuff you said about Charlie because now you're going to make uh, Blue Jays Yankees games a little tougher. For me. No, he's all, his story really is so good cool. Yeah. yeah, too That's, good for the game is a, is a really fun saying too. I like that. Too good for, good the, game. for the game. That's Trev never. No one said that yeah. about Trev. <laughs> not once. I'm not no really, not really about, about me either. Don't oh, no worry. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, we won't keep you any longer. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, this is always a pleasure. We is, we, is this what the kids do? Yes, yeah, something. Okay. Can I say thing? something about Marley I've seen real this quick? Thing. Yeah, What's say this? it. Say Trev. We we had Marley on last year on Talking Yanks. And I told her, like, this wasn't, like, I one of my must-haves when we went there. We had never met before. We were lucky enough. And then I hope more people have, are listening and like, damn, she's awesome. This is the best okay. interview we've ever Flip the hair. Ever done. Yeah. I'm serious. Yeah, I don't just awesome. say that. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Best interview ever done. Everybody I'm go very grateful. Harley. I think that you guys, uh, you guys make you feel, you know, you make me feel comfortable. And it's not, I don't do a lot of these. I think you guys have noticed. I don't really... Uh, to, I don't. I don't imagine this a journalist that doesn't make anything about herself. I really don't. So, um, so I try to avoid uh, this kind of stuff because I like it to be about the team and the news. But I'm very appreciative that that you guys have me on. Yes, of course. And one last request: I need you to make another Yankee cry uh, next yeah. season. Because you know who I, you know who it's going to be. I mean, it's it's going to be so easy. It's going to be Garrett Cole. It's going to happen. Okay, you're going to no. get him. Okay. Uh, yeah, Gary Cole. Cause I'm trying new, to think who's the, emotional enough. Because <laughs> Kenley, Kenley's gone, so Kenley would have been a good candidate. Mm, yeah. But I'm trying to think who would who would go there with passion, and I think it's only Garrett. <laughs> okay. Well, that would be awesome. I'll be waiting for it. Wow. All right. Thank you very much, Marley. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thank you for uh, having me. Marley. Thanks, Marley. Oh snap. That was lit. All right. That was Marley Rivera. She's the best. Go tweet at her and tell her that she's the best. And we enjoyed hearing you talk with the talking Yanks. Guys, we'll see you later. Go Yanks. Tell them, Grams. Go Yankees.